Okay, in this video we're going to look at uh, coefficients of static and dynamic friction. Um, now, oftentimes we just ignore these because we like to think of it as a, a perfect physics world. Obviously it's not a perfect physics world, um, but a lot of the questions that you sometimes get are treated as such. Um, so it's important for us to just go through some of the finer points, um, kind of breaking down that misconception. Um, so firstly, uh, we need to look at something on a slope. Okay. And if we have a car on a slope, like such, as you have seen in the previous videos, we have treated it from the point of view as we have got a force acting downwards, which is due to the weight. And that acts at, uh, if the car is on an inclined plane, um, theta, then we can obviously draw our vector triangle, as you've been shown, like this, with our right angle there. Now we've done lots about this force right here, but we haven't done very much with this force right here, this part of the triangle. Now there's a reason for that, is because it's actually the reaction force, we call the reaction force R, and it acts upwards like that. And it's a reaction force to the uh, car sitting on the surface, and it's a component of the weight. And so actually this, would, this force would act here, acting upwards there. And it corresponds to that vector in the vector triangle. So we call that R. Now what's important, like I said, we try to break down this, this misconception about a perfect physics world because what we've got here is when this car is rolling, uh, about to roll down, so imagine for one second we started our ramp here and we raised it up slightly and slowly until eventually it got to the point where it was just about to roll. Well, what could we say about the forces that were acting here? Well, if we were continually raising it up and it wasn't rolling, that means that there's a force of friction acting in that direction, which is equal and opposite to the force down the slope, that same force that you'd calculate as that vector as part of that triangle. So interestingly enough, we can actually see that the force in this case is directly equal to, or actually just a little bit more than, the frictional force. So that's a very important point because effectively, as soon as this starts rolling, that actually means that this force is just slightly bigger than this one, because if it was balanced, it wouldn't start moving. So, um, this one has just become slightly bigger than the frictional force F. So how do we relate the frictional force to R? Well, it's related like this. So F is equal to mu S R, where F is the force of friction, and R is that normal reaction force there. This is a constant. And this is called the coefficient of static friction. Static friction. So the coefficient of static friction. So that coefficient of static friction is a constant for this circumstance. And as we rotate this, as we move this up, we can actually use this as a simple methodology to allow us to work out what the coefficient of, fra of uh, static friction is. So imagine for a second we know we can work out what the force down the ramp is. And you know that the force down the ramp at an angle of theta is equal to the force of friction. So I'll just represent that by the F down the ramp must be um, greater than or equal to the force due to friction. And that's this force due to friction there. At a point where theta allows the movement of this car. So interestingly enough, if we say that that's the case for the most part, we can actually draw a, a conclusion about this and how we can actually determine mu s using trigonometry. So if I draw the right angle triangle out again over here, with theta there, well, if we use um, trigonometry on this, we say that the force 
down the slope is the opposite. This reaction force is the adjacent. And so we can use tan theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent. Which in this case, if we put the numbers, if we replace these letters with the correct numbers, then tan theta will be equal to um, opposite, which in this case is the F force of friction, over A, which is the reaction force. And which then, therefore, that means that if we rearrange this, F force of friction should be equal to tan theta times by r. Well look at that, this is the same equation as above and it tells us effectively that in this situation at a point where this car just starts moving that tan theta will be equal to coefficient of static friction. So that's really, really important for you to realise that that is a nice little method for working out um, coefficient of static friction. Now the only other one is the coefficient of dynamic friction. Now that's not so important, but the coefficient of dynamic friction is not the same as the static friction. So dynamic friction is represented by a letter mu d. And this is basically the friction of, the tr of an object while it's moving. And that would normally be constant and, and um, independent of the velocity. That's a really important point. So uh, in lesson, we're gonna have a look at seeing how we can apply this to some of the practicals that we're gonna look to do over the next few weeks.